Well, what do you say? Are you ready for some good news? First up, engineers at Cornell University are programming small robots to think and behave like insects. Insect anatomy has inspired robot builders for a long time. The challenge the Cornell engineers set for themselves was creating a robot that not only moved like an insect, but was programmed to autonomously behave like an insect. The most recent beneficiary of their hard work is the RoboBee, a flying robot that weighs only 80 milligrams. The RoboBee was created a few years ago by engineers at Harvard. It's an ingenious piece of technology, but its limitations render it little more than an impressive curiosity. Among those limitations, needing to remain tethered to a power source, and lacking the ability to make decisions. Researchers at Harvard are working on solving that first problem. The Cornell team has tackled the second problem by building a 3D computer simulation of RoboB that is able to accurately predict how the tiny robot will react under certain environmental conditions. Using data from the simulator, the Cornell researchers can create algorithms that will allow RoboB to adapt to those conditions in the real world. The Cornell team is also working on adding cameras and tactile sensors to RoboB. The hope is that someday RoboB and similar machines will be used to assist in rescue efforts by locating survivors of disasters and other applications as well, such as artificial pollination. Next up, an improved understanding of protein structure could yield a new treatment for cystic fibrosis. There is no cure for cystic fibrosis, and management of the disease can be difficult and expensive. But research conducted by biochemists at the University of Zurich may lead to the development of effective new drug treatments. Cystic fibrosis is caused by a mutation in the gene for a protein called CFTR, or cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. The mutated form of this protein inhibits chloride secretion, which dehydrates mucus. The thicker mucus then clogs the lungs and the sinuses, leading to difficulty breathing, inflammation, and infection. The Zurich researchers studied the structure of another protein called TMEM16A, which, like CFTR, also serves as a chlorine channel. They discovered that TMEM16A is activated by calcium and that while active, it can provide an alternative route for chloride secretion, relieving the debilitating and dangerous symptoms caused by thick, dehydrated mucus in the lungs and sinuses. The TMEM16A pathway is closed normally, but the Zurich researchers discovered that it can be opened by binding calcium ions close by. Hopefully, this finding can lead to new drugs that can open this crucial pathway and give some relief to those suffering from the effects of cystic fibrosis. This research is published in the journal Nature. And finally, for a bit of space news, NASA has announced the discovery of an eighth planet circling a distant star, which makes that star system now the first extrasolar star system known to have as many planets as our own solar system. The host star for these eight planets is Kepler 90. It's a star much like our sun, located approximately 2,500 light years from Earth. From our vantage point, the star is located in the constellation Draco. The newly discovered planet, dubbed Kepler 90i, is a small, rocky world that orbits very close to its star, completing a single revolution in just about 14 and a half days. Kepler 90i was discovered thanks to a project initiated by NASA researchers that uses an artificially intelligent neural network to sort through data collected by the Kepler spacecraft. One of the researchers responsible is also a software engineer at Google's AI division. The neural network was able to identify signals in the Kepler data indicating the presence of planets that had been missed by previous sorting methods. And the neural network found more than an eighth planet in the Kepler-90 system. It also discovered a sixth planet in the Kepler-80 system, an Earth-sized world that is gravitationally locked with four of its neighboring planets. 
And by the way, the AI was only given data for 670 systems to examine. Imagine what discoveries await when it gets to look at Kepler's full set of data, which includes over 150,000 stars. The paper on Kepler 90i and the neural network that discovered it will be published in the Astronomical Journal. Well, Adi, just in case you weren't paying attention, and maybe even still aren't, Here's what we learned this week. Engineers are programming tiny robots that look like insects to think and adapt like insects as well. A calcium activated protein could provide an effective new way to treat cystic fibrosis. And NASA discovers an eighth planet orbiting a distant star with some help from a little artificial intelligence. That's the good news. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this, the penultimate episode of this series, and I hope you'll join me next week for the finale of And Now the Good News. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and also please consider helping me to create more videos by becoming a supporter of this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshibes to become a patron. See you next time.